Gaming mysteries and rumours have been around for as long as there have been games to play, the most famous among them being Mew Under the Truck in Pokemon Red and Blue, unlocking Luigi in Mario 64, and, of course, finding the Triforce in Ocarina of Time. But was there ever any truth to the rumour? Was Link ever actually meant to find the Triforce in Ocarina of Time? So, to begin with this classic gaming mystery, we need to look at where it started. Of course, Ocarina of Time is the fifth main Zelda game, and in the first three games, the Triforce was progressively established as the final goal of Link's quests, the single most powerful magical artifact in the world. In the first game, Link collects the shattered pieces of the Triforce of Wisdom. In Zelda 2, he proves his worth and uses the full Triforce to wake a sleeping Zelda. And in A Link to the Past, after defeating Ganon, Link again stands before the completed Triforce and makes a wish to undo Ganon's evil. Link's Awakening was a handheld Zelda telling a fully self-contained story not set in Hyrule and not involving Ganon, so by the time the Ocarina of Time was on the horizon, known as Zelda 64 at the time, it just made sense to assume that in the biggest, most ambitious Zelda game to date, Link would find himself searching for the series' most iconic item. At the Shoshinkai Software Exhibition in late 1996, Nintendo showed off one of the very first glimpses of Zelda 64. A few very short clips of Link fighting Stalfos, exploring the new 3D environment, and, notably, discovering the Triforce in a chest. The game was shown again a decent amount before release, but never again showed off the Triforce. And once Ocarina of Time was released in 1998, people played through the game and found… no Triforce. Sure, Link, Zelda and Ganondorf each possessed their respective pieces, but the full set wasn't found in a chest like in the early trailer. Ocarina of Time was of course released in the late 90s, long before the internet became as big as it is now, the age of data mining and emulation, where any and all secrets can be plucked out from games, sometimes before they even hit shelves, and discussed with thousands of people instantly, so some of the mystery surrounding video games is lost. Video games have more defined boundaries now. But back then, you bought a game and that was it. It was your little world that you owned, and aside from guidebooks, trailers, and what your friends or early websites told you, that was it. So, although it didn't seem like players could collect the Triforce by playing through the game normally, this didn't stop people from talking about it, and claiming that it was indeed hidden somewhere in the game. Especially because, on the quest status menu screen, where Link's medallions are added to a hexagon on the right as he unlocks them, the symbol of the Triforce rests in the center. The Triforce is colored the same as the surrounding stone, just like the indentations where the medallions eventually fit, so what if finding the Triforce fills in this seemingly empty part of the menu screen? Rumours were everywhere. My friend was a tester for Nintendo of America and knows how to unlock it. You have to beat the whole game without dying. It's found at the end of a secret Sky Temple, but no one ever had any proof that they'd actually done it. Some of the steps people suggested you'd have to complete to unlock the Triforce were very specific and pretty insane like blow up two bombs in Hyrule Fields, then run to the very right side of Death Mountain Crater, play Zelda's lullaby, travel to Kakariko and enter Dampe's house to find a note in his journal saying, gone fishing, catch two big fish in Lake Hylia, and then a blue fairy will give you the Triforce in Castletown. Others suggested that the Unicorn Fountain, a strange place that was showed off in a few early screenshots of the game, was the secret hiding place of the Triforce. In fact, the Triforce rumours were so prevalent that a fan wrote in to the editor of Zelda64.com, the official Ocarina of Time website owned by Nintendo of America, asking for the truth. And though the editor admitted that he too had seen the countless rumours floating around the internet on how to find the Triforce, he didn't know anyone who had done it, and had even consulted a translator who worked on the game who conceded that he'd never written text for Link finding the Triforce. 
But even still, the editor didn't completely shut the door on the rumours. He admits that he feels obligated to mention that this does not prove that the Triforce is unattainable. It's possible, I guess, that Link could be struck speechless when the Triforce is acquired. I doubt it, though. Don't believe any rumours unless you read it here. I swear to my readers that if the Triforce is ever found and confirmed by our expert gameplay counsellors, I will immediately spill the beans in a special article. So, even Ocarina of Time's English translator claiming that he didn't write text involving finding the Triforce wasn't enough to completely dispel these rumours. And, of course, it wasn't long before people began hoaxing, moving on from just text-based riddles and complicated walkthroughs to actual, quote-unquote, proof. Like this shot edited to show the Triforce on the quest status screen lit up in gold, suggesting that the player had finally unlocked the elusive artifact. The most famous Triforce hoax came from someone who went by Ariana Almandos who in 1999 emailed The Land of Hyrule, a Zelda fan site, with what she claimed was proof that she had discovered and unlocked the Triforce. Ariana claimed that she found the Triforce around a week ago and took a picture on Friday, but would keep the secret for a month. She attached a photo, showing Link standing in front of the Triforce, with the Sage of Light Roru in the background. When pressed further, she followed up with elaborate clues on how she discovered it, involving skipping pulling the Master Sword in order to access the Temple of Light by playing a new song called the Overture of Sages. Though many people were sceptical, the image seemed to fool a good number of players, and the hunt for the Triforce had never been more intense. Later, Ariana followed up with more clues and more pictures, showing Link playing the Overture of Sages and him entering the Temple of Light. However, people quickly noticed that these weren't as convincing as the first shot. Link's sword is on the wrong shoulder in the screenshot of him playing the ocarina, meaning the image had been flipped. Ariana failed to explain any of the oddities about her stories and screenshots, and a few months later admitted that everything was faked. So, despite the absolute hysteria surrounding it, nobody ever actually found the Triforce in Ocarina of Time. Even though it was shown in the 1996 trailer, even with all of the nephews, cousins, dogs, stepdads claiming that they'd discovered it, an obtainable Triforce was just a rumour. Or was it? Obviously, now we can go through every byte of data on the cartridge with a fine-tooth comb and see that... Yeah, there's no obtainable Triforce found in the game. There's no Sky Temple or Temple of Lights, no Overture of Sages, no secret chest in a locked room. But there was. Surely, at some point during development, it was possible for Link to find the Triforce in a chest. But there's absolutely nothing to suggest this in the final build, which means one of two things. One, the 1996 trailer was either pre-rendered or so incredibly early on in development that collecting the Triforce was never really intended to be part of the game, just some early eye-catching trailer footage. Or two, the Triforce was meant to be obtainable in the game at some point like we see here, but was cut out during development. So, is there any evidence of it having been cut? Well, while in recent years development builds of Ocarina of Time have leaked and been scoured for new information, there still isn't much that could solidify this theory. There's no cut Triforce item, and even the room in which we see Link find it in the trailer was apparently just designed using Super Mario 64 assets, as it was built so early on in development. But there is one minor detail. In a late 1997 build of Ocarina of Time, around a year before the game's release, data miners found this. An icon of the Triforce, which fits perfectly on the quest status screen along with the symbols for the medallions. In the final version, this Triforce graphic is rendered together with the entire menu screen, but here it's separate, just like the icons for the collectible Sage's medallions. In addition, while the medallion's file names are H24 Seals 1 through 6, this Triforce symbol is named H32 Seals 7, which could suggest that it was going to appear over the menu at some point, perhaps indicating that Link had found the Triforce. The sprite doesn't have any colour values to save memory space, so we don't know how it was meant to look. 
but if coloured gold, this is what the menu screen might have looked like. Again, this tiny image is all the evidence we have, so it's not confirmed by any means, but it's entirely possible that this was, at some point, a symbol to mark the completion of the most famous Zelda quest that never existed, the search for the Triforce. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, leave a like or subscribe if you haven't already for more Zelda content. Cheers guys, and I'll see you next time.